have I got a treat for you today. Behind me here is the Azimut Grande Trideck, the flagship of the Azimut Super Yacht Fleet, and she is an absolute beauty. So 125 foot long, 26 foot wide, powered by a pair of 2,600 horsepower MTU engines. Now I believe this one is actually for sale at the moment. It's a year or so old, and I think the price is around about 18 million euros. But we are gonna give you the full tour, show you absolutely everything, and it is a really interesting and unusual layout. And that starts right here. You can see that passerelle, it comes out not from the lower deck, but from that kind of raised cockpit area and creates a rather fabulous arch over the beach club. So let's get going and I'll try and show you everything there is to see. Now, this is really special passerelle. I've never been on one that's quite so high up in the air or quite so long, but this is the special kind of extra deck. It's some really unusual layers going on. It's kind of a split level approach, a cascade of different decks and you can probably see a little bit of how that works just by looking up at the top there and then all these different decks and this is I think what the designer refers to as the plus one, the extra deck. So you've got four decks plus this kind of half deck but really lovely raised seating position. We've got glass balustrades all around so you have a beautiful view and a big sunshade overhead providing a bit of protection but then what's rather nice is that the main aft cockpit is a level down and it feels much more private because you've got that half deck above you when you're moored at stern two at the quay you've got this lovely protected cockpit area here and it's just it's quiet it's shaded it's a bit more private big table you can sit all your guests around here and then that links down to the beach club and this is really for me, the main selling point of the yacht. Check out this beach club. It is an absolute stunner. Right next to the water, this whole transom here, this is actually a folding transom. So when that's underway, that folds up and comes at an angle to create a transom and obviously gives you more protection in a following sea. But when you're at anchor, you fold it down, you've got this beautiful view, very sociable arrangement with those two low level sofas. And there's that passerelle we just walked under. And look at this, he's got the full toy cupboard on board. We've got Sea Bob over here. We've got a lift foil there. We've got an electric surfboard, two electric surfboards, one Radin, one Jet Surf. Really got all the toys down here. And I love these framed arches here. They're kind of cutaway bulwarks. So you get a fabulous view out through the side as well as out the back. Now, there's a few extra features in here. You can see we've got day heads in here. Really handy when you're in and out of the water all day. You don't want to be traipsing through the rest of the yacht. A bit more storage and towels and things in there. This is very much the heart of where you're going to be spending a lot of your daytime, certainly playing with all these toys. Now, let's make our way back up. So this is now the main deck level. So what I'm going to do is start at the top and make our way down the yacht so we don't miss anything. So let's go right up to the top deck straight away. As you can see, we have got multiple layers and here we are on the sun deck. Now, what a cool space this is. Three bean bags just scattered around here. We've got a workout little gym corner on this side with a workout bench. Huge table here, you can relax out. Look at the length of that, it's absolutely enormous. And that is because it's a really wide beam boat. It stretches all the way out. It's the full width of the boat on board here. But this is my absolute favorite spot. This is the kind of bar 
in the sky, if you like. It's kind of the rooftop bar with a circular shape. It's three or four, looks like four, five stools all the way around it. All the equipment you need to whip up a lovely cocktail on board. Beautiful view over the front. Absolutely perfect spot to spend the evenings drinking a gin and tonic or a cold glass of wine. Nice breeze flowing through. You can see there is a hard top overhead and a canopy to help keep things nice and shaded. Right, let's start making our way down. So moving into the main saloon, this is now Achilles Salvagne interior, very much known for his beautiful curves and shapes, and you can see that straight away with this sideboard unit, oval shapes at either end, beautifully curved woodwork, a light set into the actual surface of the bar, massive TV screen over here. Now that very cleverly, that all folds flat and then whirs back in behind there, so you have a massive TV screen without it becoming intrusive. It all tucks away behind that side unit there when you're not watching it. Lovely, relaxed, low-level seating. Even on the floor, the carpet is set into the wooden floor. It's very kind of organic, natural curves. Again, there's another little sideboard here. Just look at the shape of that. So many curves and surfaces and shapes going on. Huge windows down either side. Lots of good views. You don't really appreciate it here because we're squeezed in between two boats. So moving forward from the saloon, we've got on the port side access to the galley and the crew area. And here you can see the galley. We've got a big full height fridge freezer. Really good working area. More storage, more freezer space, more wine space and then that drops down into the crew area. And I'm not sure, I think the crew may be here, so we'll have a little look to see if we can. I won't go and intrude on their cabins, but you can see we've got cabins on either side here, the little mess area forward, and then you can see one of the cabins in there. But as this is a crewed yacht, there's even another one up there, so it's crewed by at least four people, but you can fit more in there if you want to but as they're actually on board at the moment, uh, I'm not gonna intrude on their private space. So first up, let's go and have a look at the guest accommodation. Now, it's really hard to stop the flickering on this, I'm afraid because of that very cool underlit onyx floor, I just can't quite get the frequency of the lights right, so I apologize for strange goings on there. Hopefully that will disappear once we get down there. Okay, so we've got four cabins here. There is double on the aft starboard side. Again, law of these lovely curves. Check out this, it's almost like a beehive, that piece of furniture. But it is in fact just drawers, they all pull out. All en suite, obviously. Lovely marble sinks. Big shower, teak seat, overhead rain shower. Good size hull window, again, lots of curves everywhere. And the bed head and the bulk head, really high contrast wood. Matching one over on this side, very similar dimensions, very similar style. Even got that same big egg-shaped mirror and beehive style drawers. Again, en suite, exactly the same. Very nice and cool and calm down here. Air conditioning humming away. And then as we move forward, we've got another double on the starboard side. Little bit smaller, but it has got an extra Pullman berth on this side, so that will fold down and create another bed if needed. All en suite. And again, over on the port side, forward. Apart from this time, we've got a twin. 
again with another Pullman, so that just folds down, creates an extra sleeping space, all en suite. Every bit as stylish. But let's gradually make our way back upstairs. Now let's go forward and see the owner's cabin because that is really quite something. Now, as we go through here, just worth noting there is day heads here. So as well as that one down on the beach club, you've got one here on the main deck. And check this out. So at this point, the boat is full beam. So the side decks go up and over to enjoy the full beam here in the owner's cabin. And just check this out. <laughs> Look at that. Now that is somewhere I would like to spend my holidays. Another oval shaped desk, huge windows, and look at that massive stainless steel. I presume that's a structural beam, but it's also a really cool styling feature. But look how much natural light there is pouring in here, even though we're hemmed in between two big boats. Beautiful little seating area here. And then the heads where it should be traditionally on a yacht, forward. And we've got full twin matching heads. So we've got one on this side, one sink, shower in between, and exactly the same over on the other side. Another sink, another heads compartment. That's really civilized. You know when you've got a pair of matching bathrooms for the owner's suite, you're in a pretty serious yacht. And I rather like the way this headboard extends so far out around the bed. It just sort of exaggerates the space to spare feeling. But really, look at that. I've seen houses with smaller master bedrooms than that. Now, I think that is owner's storage, so we won't go in there because, again, I think there is kit on board. But then there is an entire kind of dressing room area here. We slightly skipped over it on the way, but two big covers there. I'm not going to open them again because I think there are personal belongings on board, but very cool to have these kind of separate zoned areas. And then if we come back out, we'll go up the stairs. And again, I'm sorry for the flickering. I just can't kill it. Now it sounds quite busy up here, so we might have to try and dodge around a little bit. But if we go this way, we're now heading towards the stern of the yacht, and this is one of the VIP cabins. And again, how cool is this? On the upper deck at the stern end, elevated views out through the window, really private space, all on your own. It is the only cabin on this deck. But what a special place. Obviously, it's an ensuite bathroom. Again, using that lovely veined marble, light woods, recessed lighting, curves absolutely everywhere. A little peek in one of these cupboards, maybe if it's hopefully a, oh, look at that. You see, even there, you could have just had a flat door, but no, they've got the full curved door that works its way round and ends with that very pleasing curved edge. Let's see if we can find, this looks like it's cleared out now. So as we move back towards the stern, this is again on the upper deck, and look at this for another cool raised lounge area. Big oval circular windows, again oval shaped deck head decoration, quirky I don't know what shape that table is, but it's got curves, it's got angles, it's all going on, but seating all the way around it. You could sit and have dinner there, or I don't know, play a game of cards, or just have a cocktail drink. Lots more storage all the way along here. Another TV that rises out of there. And this comes out onto the raised aft deck, which again has a big teak dining table here. You can see we've got freestanding chairs all around. And again, this is sort of one level down from the sky deck, but 
beautifully sheltered under that overhang. And then if we make our way forwards from here, we might be able to have a look on the bridge. Well, the captain has very kindly agreed to show us on board the bridge itself. Welcome. So, thank you. So there is a similar on board, and there is a full screen, and you can just use each screen, connect with another screen, and to continue to use. And there is a, almost all around the boat you can see, and you can watch with the cameras. And there is have the anchors cameras, anchor lights, and then uh, upper deck, uh, main decks you can watch, and then the, the back side of the boat. And we have a very good, very nice navio system by the sea energy. And also you can just get a control of the cameras also at another position of the boats. And you can just check all of your electricity powers and the waters and then like fuels. All that's easy to control. Brilliant. And, and what about uh, cruising? What sort of speed do you cruise at? Cruising, uh, usually we are cruising if the weather's good between 10 and 12 knots. And then it's uh, charging per hour around like more or less 100 and 130 liters fuel. So 130 liters per hour uh, per at, hour, at 10 to 12 knots. 10 and 12 between, and yeah. then between the waters as well. If okay. it's getting from the back, he's getting extra uh, powers, and then it's pushing you if it's a bow, and then the side. Of course. Yeah, charging small. And, and what uh, about maximum speed? Maximum speed is 29, I reach. Wow. As, uh, but you shouldn't uh, pull a tender behind of you. Now, there's another rather special area to show you, and that is the foredeck. So if you can see, we're on the main deck level here. This is the protected cockpit that we saw earlier. And if you come along here, you can see that the side decks finish halfway along and then go up a level. And that is to create the space for that remarkable full beam master cabin forward. So the steps now go up a level. And here, is the foredeck lounge, which I think is probably even more special than that rooftop bar we saw earlier. Look at that for a chill out zone. You've got a spa tub in the middle of it, sun pads either side, little circular tables for your drinks and snacks, cup holders, more canopies overhead, casting a little bit of shade, a couple of big Hurricane lanterns with candles in, more seating sun pads. What a lovely space. And then drops down for the actual working area. So everything you need to is still accessible. They haven't covered it up. There's just a separate kind of technical working space for the crew so they can do the bow lines, anchors, all of that. That is very cool area. That is the side-mounted tender garage. You can see we've got uh, quite a big Williams diesel jet, I suspect, in there. I think you can fit up to an 18-foot boat in there and a jet ski alongside it, a Sea-Doo. So impressive amount of toys, and that's all side-mounted at the starboard side. And then yeah. into the engine room. Check those puppies out, wow. Couple of big MTUs. Do we know if these are 2,400 or 2,600? So these are the two sixes. Look at that, but that is quite an impressive engine room. All the engineers' tools beautifully arranged. And very easy access to the engines, all safely protected, stainless steel cages, full standing headroom, beautifully lit. That is a very pucker looking engine room. Well, we'll finish up on this little raised cockpit area. That has been a really interesting tour. I love all these different layers, different outside spaces. You can find a little corner to hide away, just yourself and a couple of friends. There are so many different places to enjoy. Do let me know what you make of the boat in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.